so here we go. A quick review, oh, I'm sorry, of writing the equation of a line. This is a really important skill. I know you all know it. It's not going to be an issue. I'm going to give you two points. Uh, point A is 6, 2. Point B is 4, 8. Write the equation of line AB. Who remembers how we start? We're writing the equation of line AB. This is review. This is a quick review. It's the last thing we talked about before we start the new stuff. Who remembers how to do this? Oh, my land negotiation. Six. Land negotiation. First thing we do is find the slope. No, this is an extra. This is just a little bit of review to catch us up, okay? For those that may be a little foggy. If you have to write the equation of a line, and this is the notation for a line, and I know you know that because I just observed the geometry class and they were talking about it. Oh, gotcha. We yep. do 2 minus 8 yeah. over 6 minus 4. For sure. Because for sure. when we do slope, it is always y on top. Just like the grid is y on top, slope is y on top. So that's negative 6 over 2. I got negative 3 for my slope. Now you have a choice. You can either point slope it. Uh-oh. That's a problem. Or you can slope intercept. So what do you want to do? Slope intercept is y equals mx plus b. Point slope is y minus y1 equals mx minus x1. Which one do you want to do? We don't have to do both because they both get the same answer. We only need to do it through it once. Slope intercept form. When we do this, we pick one of our points, right? And it doesn't make any difference which one. You have a preference? Um, six and two. And we use our slope. So two equals negative three times six plus b. This is x, this is y. Into my equation. Y, m, x. I know all those numbers, and I'm going to figure out b. So two equals negative 18 plus b, and b equals 20. So my answer, I have to write an answer, y equals negative 3x plus 20. Okay? Easy. All right, P5. Solve graphically with your calculator. Oh my gosh, do we know how to do that? We just went through the procedure. So here we go. Let's get our calculators out. I turned off too soon. And let's talk about B, C, and E, or B, C, and D real quick. In order to do this on your calculator, you must have the equation equal to zero. Okay? So for B, you're going to have to move the 15 over. For C, you're going to have to move the 20 over. And for D, you're going to have to move the 25 over. All right? I want this side of the room to work on A. I want this middle group right here. I want you guys to work on B. Remember, you have to move the 15 over. You're doing B. And you guys are going to do C, this group. Okay? And I will do D. Calculator, help each other. 
you guys, don't worry. Let's, let's stay focused on that. Okay. In the middle of the football game, you're not going to be thinking about math class, so don't be thinking about football in the middle of math class. Yeah. Well, Betsy got to figure out the trajectory. I so think I know that. He has to look at the plane of the field. All right, everybody, even if you don't have a calculator, you should be participating in this. Dang, bro. For TCG. So we'll go. Uh, right up. We got C, right? So. Yes, you have C. And I have, I've kind of given you the form up here for C. Oh, okay. This is the way you probably want to put it in. I did distribute it and use my 20. By the way, all of these, each of you should be getting a parabola. Now, you may not see the whole parabola because you're not big enough, but all of these equations will have a parabola type graph. Group A, did you guys get answers yet? The problem A? What'd you come up with, Sweet Pea? Uh, five and point five? I want to see if anybody else got that. Five and point five? Oh, no, I didn't get five. Did you get point five? For both of them? Did you get two answers? Negative three and point five. Anybody else get that over there? Are those the zeros? Point six is not the same thing. Nazi, are you using are you using the root button or are you just tracing? Yeah, are you using the root button? All right. Okay, we're gonna go through question A. This is the last one we got time for, folks. So I need you to pay attention. So I'm gonna clear out the old equation. Now I'm gonna put in my new equation. This is problem A, which is 2x squared plus 5x minus 3. So my equation is in. I'm gonna hit graph, and actually my window is kind of funky, but do I see a parabola? Yes. Do I see two places where it crosses the x-axis? Yes. Yes. Now, for this problem, if you don't want all this empty space here, make y min a little bit bigger. So I'll go to window, and I'll set that at negative 10. Now I see the same parabola, but I don't have all that empty space down there. Does it matter? Absolutely not. Does your window have to be set like my window? Absolutely not. What do you have to be able to see? Two places where it crosses the x-axis. If your equation is a squared equation, x squared, quadratic, 
you're going to look for a parabola and you're going to look for two places that it crosses the x-axis and you're going to play around with your window until you see that okay there's no magic formula you just got to play with it until you see it okay so i see it now i can only find one zero at a time so i'm going to find this one first it doesn't matter i have a jj so i'm going to find that one first so one more time second calc zero got to move that cursor a long way because it has to be on the left side of the zero then i'm going right and then i'm taking a guess and if you said negative three you're right that one's right on negative three Okay, Massey, there's no way you should get anything other than negative three if you press the buttons I told you. Yeah, we didn't do like the, like when we said it. Yeah. 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 When you zoom and trace, which is what you did basically, you're never going to get exactly right on it. You have to use that zero button. So we go into second calc, zero, and now we're going to find the other one. So I'm going to move my cursor. It's on the left. Now I'm going to move it, it's on the right, now I'm going to move it on there, and that one is 0.5, so whoever gave me these answers, you were correct. What answers did you get for this one? Uh, I think it's three. Three or five, perfect. What answers did you get for this one? Uh, negative five. Negative five and one point three. So write those down and play with them on your own time when you have a calculator, those of you that don't have one. I've done this one. I had it on the board, so but now I don't because I changed it. But uh, these are the answers to that one. Everybody okay with that? Today's lesson is all about solving equations that have squares in them. There are four ways we're going to have to do that. One is graphing. What did I tell you about a squared equation? When you graph it, you will get what shape? A parabola. You will look for what on your graph? Two places where you're crossing the x-axis. Okay? Don't make fun of me. Now, here we go. 2A. Solve by taking the square root. That's what those directions mean. Notice that 2a is the same as 1d. This one I did on my calculator. Now I'm being asked to solve it by taking the square root of both sides. Normally, when we take the square root of both sides, we like to have x squared by itself. Now you'll say to me, Miss Ford, I don't like that fraction. Well, you're going to have a fraction at some point anyway. So I'm going to do it the way we normally do it, which is we get x squared by itself. Then we'll take the square root of both sides. Do you know how to take the square root of a fraction? Calculator. No, we don't even use a calculator. You don't need one. It's the square root of the top Five. over the square root of the bottom. bottom. So that would be, that's an easy number. That would be five halves. But when you take the square root of both sides, you always put plus or minus over here on the right. Always, always, always. So your answer is actually plus or minus five halves. Now, why do you think we have to take plus or minus? How many answers are we supposed to have? Two. Two. If you forget the plus or minus, how many answers do you get? One. One. You have a parabola. It crosses in two places. The plus or minus gives you both places. All right, what about B? Here we go. We're going to take the square root of both sides. 
Now, what happens when you take the square root of something squared? It goes away. It goes away. <laughs> so you're left with x minus 3 equals plus or minus 5. Don't forget the plus or minus. So x equals 3 plus or minus 5. I have to add my 3 over to the other side, right? Mm -hmm. So here we go. What is 3 plus 5? Eight. Eight. What is three minus five? Eight. And there are the answers. So if you graphed this on your calculator, it, you'd have a parabola, and it would cross at negative two and at eight. That's what that means. All right, what about C? What are we going to do first in problem C? Divide by three. Very good. Whoever said that, you are on target. Good Thank job. You. Thank you. Now, once we've divided by three, then it looks just like this one. So we'll just take the square root of both sides. Colleen. Colleen, Colleen. Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm tired of that. <laughs> All right, I've taken the square root of both sides. These go away, so x minus 4 equals plus or minus the square root of 3. Now, you're not going to do anything with the square root of 3. You're going to add 4 over here, and your answers will be 4 plus or minus the square root of 3. Does everybody recognize that's still two answers? Yes. 4 plus root 3, 4 minus root 3. You don't have to separate them. You can write them just like this. So we divided by 3, took the square root, and added 4 to the other side. One more. In letter D, what will be our first step? Square root. Square root. If you thought about, for just a split second, you thought, maybe I should divide. You can't, because that 2 is inside the parentheses. So we are just going to start with the square root right off the bat. So 2x plus 1, because these cancel, they go away. 2x plus 1 equals, be careful, uh -uh, plus or minus 4. So now we'll subtract 1, and divide by 2. Now, you can't leave this one. You, these are regular numbers. you got to figure that out. So negative 1 plus 4 divided by 2. So my first answer is 3 halves. Negative 1 plus 4 divided by 2. And the other one is negative 1 minus 4. Negative 5 divided by 2. Alright. Solve by completing the square. Yes. Uh, I thought it was true. Well, like, my name is just one of the Yeah. I thought I was supposed to dismiss you at two o'clock. No, 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 no. I think we're supposed to leave at two or two o'clock. You're, you're pulling off the bus at two o'clock? I, I believe I so. Could be wrong. I don't think we're going to leave until midnight, though, are they? <laughs> <laughs> All right. 
right, let me get through one completing the square problem with you guys and you can go, okay? One problem, this won't take very long because you did it last year. All right, step one, see that seven right there? You're gonna move him to the other side and you're gonna move him over there, kids, because you need to make room. You are going to be adding something to both sides. Does this look familiar now? You're going to be adding something to both sides. Does anyone happen to remember what we add to both sides? Yeah. Now, somebody said nine, and that's right. Was it you, Marley? Yeah. How'd you get nine? Um, maybe that's six divided by two squared. Somebody remembers her algebra. Six divided by two. Six di no, you didn't listen. Six divided by two squared. So we take half of this number, mm -hmm. half of six is three, three. and oh, you no. square it. So half of six, Seven. and then you square it. Seven. Add nine to both sides. The reason that it's called completing the square is because this factors into a perfect square. If you factored this like this, both of the parentheses would match. What would be the two parentheses that would give me this? X plus three. X, not plus three. Minus three. X minus three. X minus three. This will always be X. This will always be that sign. And this will be whatever you squared to get that. X minus three squared equals 16. Seven plus nine. Now what do we do here? It looks just like these did. Now we take the square root. So X minus three, because these go away, equals what? Plus or minus. Plus, plus or, minus. or minus four. X equals three plus or minus four. So your answers are three plus four, which is seven, and three minus four, which is negative one. All right. So if you are a cheerleader, whoever else, whatever else group is going. Friday, gotta get a hug in here. Let's get this going. 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 Let's get all right. Yeah. You got 15 more minutes. Hold it. Is this your water? Please Thank you. Is this your water? Good luck. 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 It is exactly the same problem. I'm going to leave that up there and let's see if you can work through B. In fact, do I have anybody who's willing to try it on the board? Me. All right. Yes. And if I have more than one person, we have more boards. So if you go, go, go. This one's on video, though. You're going to be on video. Oh. Just kidding. All right. You can use any board. Ms. Anki, throw me a marker. No, thank you. No, we don't throw markers. Mrs. Ford will bring you one, but okay. I'm not going to throw one. Hope somebody's eye out. Now, what should those of you at your seats be doing? Doing the problems. Absolutely. Doing the problems. Hmm. Huh. Yeah. 
got more board space up here if somebody wants to come up and do it. She's done it up here on the board, and Marley is almost there. She's got it too. Does anybody have a question about that? Girls over here, what do you think? stuff to keep track of from Azzy. All right, I bet there's another one. And I bet that it has something tricky and hard in it. Marley, you doing okay? Yeah. Decorating while you're at it? Okay. All right. Now, this one adds something in the mix. We have to take care of it. When you complete the square, the number one rule is you can't have a coefficient on the x squared. It needs to be a plain x squared. So when I complete the square, I must have a plain x squared. So what am I gonna do with this two? I'm gonna divide by two. We are going to get it out of the problem, gone. So that will leave me with x squared minus 10x plus two, and that's still zero. And now we're ready to roll through just like we did before. So what's the next step? Move the two to the other side. And remember why you're doing that. You're doing that so that you can make room for the number that you have to add to give you your square. So now we gotta figure out what that number is. 25. And Joseph, how did you get 25? Exactly. 10 divided by 2. Half of 10 is 5. Squared is 25. Now, in this parentheses then will be an x minus 5. x minus and that equals 23. So what's the next step? 
square roots on sides. These go away. We're left with x minus 5 equals plus or minus. Good job. I hope you remember that by the time I see you again, which is like a long time away. And then we need to add the 5. You can add it at the front of the radical or the back. I prefer the front. I don't know why. X equals 5 plus or minus root 23. If you wrote plus or minus root 23 plus 5, that's absolutely fine. They are both the same thing, absolutely fine either way. All right, feeling confident about that? All right, we have one more thing to talk about today and then we'll be done. The last thing we have to talk about is number four, which is the quadratic formula. Now, John, you are looking super enthusiastic today. Do you remember anything, John, about the quadratic formula? Anything at all? It's, okay, you're close. It's actually, there's a plus or minus in it, but actually it's negative B. And then there's a plus or minus. Close, you got a B squared minus 4AC. That's right, you got that piece in there. And the whole shebang is over 2A. Yeah. Now, I'm sure that looks familiar. Some of you may have a cute little song to sing. Somehow, you have to remember this. Okay, so this is a biggie. You gotta know it. What do the A, B, and C here stand for? What, what are they? The A, B, and C in the formula. Where do I get those? From my problem. A is the coefficient right here. So in my problem, A is 1. It's 1 x squared. My B is 8. And my C, watch it now, my C is negative 9. Everybody got it? All right, so now I'm going to just plug in. Here we go. Negative B will be negative 8 plus or minus, all right, what's 8 squared? 64. I don't worry about negative 8 squared because the negative goes away, it gets squared out. So 64 minus 4 times A times B. I'm just plugging numbers right into my formula. Over 2 times 1, which is 2. A is 1, so it's just 2 times 1 or 2. Now I need to work on underneath there. So what do I get when I multiply negative 4 times 1 times negative 9? I get a positive 36 that has to be added to my 64. These negatives cancel here. So that's going to become an addition problem. 64 plus 36. Oh, life does not get any better than that. Why am I so excited to have a hundred under there? It's a perfect square. The square root of a hundred is 10. And now I'm going to figure out what my answers are. Negative 8 plus 10 divided by 2, 1. So one of my answers is 1. Negative 8 minus 10, negative 
negative 18 divided by 2, which is negative 9. Now, let's tie it all together and then I'll just shut up. I know that's what you're all wishing I do. No, I'm just going to shut up. Never, so, here's the deal. How many <laughs> answers did I get? Two. Two. It doesn't matter how you do the problem. We looked at several different ways. Complete the square, quadratic formula, graph it. If it's a quadratic, an x squared equation, its picture is going to be a parabola and it's going to cross the x-axis in two places. You need to get two answers when you do this, okay? All right. Now, when we have finished completely P1 to P4, and you can pretty much do all of P5. There may be a couple in there we have yet to talk about. So I would suggest this weekend, if you haven't started the homework yet, you better get going on it because we only have to get through P7. So basically we have two more sections to go and it's all gonna be due. So you still got some days, but don't wait. P1 to P5, you should pretty much have completed. If you have a question about a problem as you do your homework, get a highlighter out or somehow mark it so that when we have some time for review and all that before I check it, you can be asking me, Mrs. Ford, P4 number seven, I don't know how to do it. And we can go over that. You can also come in any morning. You can also come to open gym on Sunday to the four. I don't know if you've ever come or not, but I'm always there. You are welcome to come to open gym two to four. Get on my website and we'll get the details. But we do have one this Sunday. Okay, everybody? Okay. All right. Well, it's Friday. Um, Joseph, can you hit the off button there?